We on a roll now. Let's go, let's go now. We on a roll now. Let's go, let's go now. Hello, good morning, where do you came from? Perfect stranger I've been waiting on. Right place at the right time. Nobody can tell me you ain't my mind. Yeah. To be honest, I've never been this bold. Your personality. Wow, what a beautiful people! Welcome back to the Island Family Channel. Right now in tune with Island by Africa. Yesterday. So guys, so guys, breaking news, breaking news, breaking news. I am finally in Australia. Yesterday. Can't yeah, make up too much noise. That's what. I'm currently in quarantine, guys. Right now I'm there for what? Six day in quarantine, no? You see me? So guys. So guys, where do I even start? Where do I even start? Alright. So as you guys know, um, all of you watched the previous video, right? If you're new to the channel, make sure to check out the previous video to understand this video. Right? So I've seen your guys' um comments, your suggestions, your opinions, right? But the thing is, I did not need a transit visa. I did not need a transit visa to enter Australia. I mean to enter London as what well. you know the, the first lady was telling me and all of that. You know, so um how did I end it up being on that flight? Let's go back to the beginning, right? So as you guys as you guys know, I didn't end up on the first flight, right? They were saying to me, um I was saying, ah, oh, this is the end of it now because oh I didn't get on that first flight. And thing because oh they're saying oh I don't have a visa and all of that and the woman was giving me attitude on top of it. So what happened now is that I was saying oh babe I'm gonna go home the next day I'm just gonna stay at this Airbnb and then go home the next day and babe was like ah why don't you stay like two more nights and stuff and then we'll try to figure out things if we can get an next flight and I was like okay then I work with that and that's exactly what I did. You know, and I ended up staying, which I really was hoping to find a flight because I didn't really want to go home after telling all my people goodbye already, you see me? So it's kind of, it felt, to me it would have been really embarrassing, you know? Like, that we're only humans, you understand? So I would have felt, I really, I would have felt a type of way, you know, which thankfully that did not happen, you know? So no, the travel agent, they was um we're still in contact with the travel agent and say um hopefully we'll find a flight you know so i don't have to go home right and and the guys search and search and it was like no nah, i might have a potential flight and and then he said uh i should get a covid test because i might have a, a potential flight and i was like my have, it didn't sound right to me because like as i said again i'm this type of person seeing is believing to me you understand and and then he was saying get the covid test which cost me 15000 every covid test because pcr test cost 15000 right and i was saying to babe like i don't i don't i'm not sure of this right and babe was saying just get the test right so i i went ahead and got the covid test and it ended up he didn't have any flight right and then babe decided that all right we're going to change um we're going to change the travel agent and good thing be about a, a backup travel agent and said alright we're gonna work with this guy and luckily uh because i ended up staying in Montego bay over a week crazy right i ended up staying in Montego bay over a week before i could find a flight and the guy went and the second travel agent now he ended up finding a flight for us which was a bingo and now when he found that flight i was like okay get, the, get another pcr test done and head to the airport and I was you know because of what happened previously I was like shoot please Lord don't let this happen again right I'm just praying to God like I don't want the same the same thing to, to repeat again you know and I ended up going to the airport now and as I enter they asked me for do you have your travel locator for me and I said yeah right here G give um her to look at my passport and then she was like, uh, you're going to Australia? And I said, yes. And you're going through London? I said, yes. And then she was like, 
uh, um, so where's your visa? And I said, uh, I don't need a visa, I am exempt. And I'm staying in, in London less than 24 hours, right? Traveling on your side. And they, they didn't understand it because they were saying, oh, I need a, a visa and all of that. But the, the difference with these people, they were actually willing to hear me out. They even talked to the travel agent. They even talked to Maria and everything, right? They, they, they brought me into a room to, to figure out if the visa, because they didn't understand the visa, that it was a, a, a digital visa, right? I didn't need it in my hand to show, right? So they didn't understand that at first, right? And we got that all sorted out and then the guy was making calls with immigration and then, and then I heard him saying, oh, so it's okay to travel then? And, and I was like, oh God, yes. And then, and then he was still on the phone talking for a few minutes still and he took my passport, took my itinerary and you know, and then he, he came back with it and then he was like, oh, you're free to check in. And I was like, thank you Lord. And Dave was on the phone to her that and I was like, yes, finally. You know, so no. As I as I um as I as I check in, I, I, my check in went through smoothly and everything. And then another thing happened. Another thing happened, guys. That day when I was supposed to travel, most of you might be aware of the tropical storm. Tropical storm grace. That was the day I was supposed to travel. Right? That was the day my flight was supposed to leave. Right? And it ended up cancelled. Right? Because even before I even leave out to, to, to go to the airport that day, I was worried about, you know, my flight might be cancelled. And that's exactly what happened. Right? So the flight cancelled way late in the evening. And I was like, geez, man, you know, the one chance I get to, to go see my family now, this happened. And then they were, they were, um, Taking people to um, hotels and all of that, you know, freely and all of that, I guess, compensate. And, you know, and I was like, ah, oh, I'm just gonna go to the Airbnb because, I mean, it was a three minute drive. And, I mean, I already had an extra night there. And I was like, alright, I'm just gonna go to the Airbnb because the next flight was rescheduled for the next day, right? Four o'clock the next day. And I was like, okay. You know, so hopefully we were hoping that we're f we, we would find a flight within that time, a connected flight, which luckily that happened, right? So the next day and all forward, went to the airport. And as I am entering my gate, uh, the, the lady there asked me, because this is someone new again, was like, oh, do you, do you have your papers and this and that? And I was like, yeah. And then the same thing again, she asked me about, uh, you don't have a visa and then right there and then as she said that the guy the guy that dealt with everything yesterday saw me and I was like oh he's free to go we, he was here yesterday and we, we deal with everything and I was like oh thank you lord you know so I went through check-in you know and and everything and then um upstairs now to go board the flight and I was like oh this airport is huge man and things so you know Things went smoothly. Got on the, the flight, first time being in a on an airplane. First time seeing airplane up and up close and first like that was an excited feeling and thing. You know, and um yeah the flight left out about seven something, I don't remember exactly but and then I ended up falling asleep like sometime after eight and wake up the next morning. I was in London, bright sunshine me I see I come out. It was just like 25 minutes to landing when I wake up. And then I reached in London and um, I was at Terminal 2, I believe, and then I had to go to Tem Terminal 3, which was like a five, six minute drive on a, like a shuttle bus, they call it. And then this guy um, assisted assisted me and be able to ask on the phone and be able to telling the guy that, um, you know, can you take him through checking without uh, going through border control and all of that because he don't have a transit. Right, so the guy was like, oh, everything cool, I can get him sorted out and you know, the guy took me through with ease, skip out everybody, he just take me to a, a special gate, I guess, you know, and skip out everybody and, you know, and and then, you no, know, my, my next flight was supposed to be within the, like the next 10 hours and then, because the travel agent was, was there with me all along the way, he, he, 
he got me a earlier flight with, which was within an hour and a half right so i didn't stay long in london and yeah that was that was easy you know was there just chilling for a while killing time until my next flight and yeah that was pretty smooth you know like the the the, the flight that was packed was the one from jamaica to london so now when i uh, i entered that next flight now to go to singapore it didn't have much people on it you know which was good i was i was flying premium and yeah it, it was an amazing experience uh i didn't sleep much on that flight so yeah it, it was crazy i watch movie a lot <laughs> and things like that and then now as my touchdown in singapore my next flight was 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 supposed to be business class right so yeah that was crazy i didn't have any time to go to the business class lounge area and things like that so it was pretty quick i had to find my gate and then head on to my next flight my final flight to australia and that flight that flight the flight from singapore to australia was the shortest flight which was like six hours they say it was seven hours but reaching within like six hours six hours and some minutes you know so that was amazing you know and business class flying business class for the very first time i mean flying overall for the very first time it was amazing but business class was very comfy because you know i could lay flat flat you see me i could lay down flat and feel comfortable and sleep good that was the best um sleep i ever had on, on the whole trip after i came out the the flight police and soldiers they were leading us um in a straight line and you know and thing like that and now uh th this area i don't know what you call it but there was a farm I had to fill out right i had to fill out this farm and then um i have to give it to like like there was a part that i had to like they took my passport and they took that farm and then i was the second person now to to go up to the to the police right and then he, he looked at my passport he looked at the farm and then he said um it's your first time traveling and i said yes and then he looked for like 30 seconds he, and then he was like oh you're free to go and i was like oh lord i wonder if this is it like you know because I, I as i said for me guys to me guys i thought my expectation was different because i thought i would have been like interrogated you know and uh, be asking a bag of questions and you know which wasn't that wasn't the case the only thing the guy said to me is like your first time traveling and i said yes and then he, as i said simple as that he just he just said okay you're free to go and yeah that was it and then after after that now i pick up my luggage and and then i had to fill out a, a paper to stay in hotel quarantine and yeah there was like soldiers that um put our, our luggage on the bus and then yeah it, it to quarantine was, was pretty was pretty easy you understand pretty easy um procedure and everything and i ended up yeah and now i'm here in quarantine so yeah guys i'm here and also the departure videos are coming guys the reuniting videos are coming you know so stick around for that the moment i get out of quarantine that video will drop so stick around for that also quarantine the quarantine video will drop so stay tuned for that guys you see me it, it was pretty easy everything went smooth as i said i didn't go through any interrogation anything at all nobody asked me about that bag of questions or anything it was pretty smooth and as i said i didn't need a transit visa i did not need a transit visa so i'm thankful i'm feeling blessed and happy right now just killing time in quarantine until all of this is over I can finally be with my family is it me be with like a bubble and my beautiful wife maria is it me so yeah guys i'm here i'm here to stay is it me finally Finally, fine. Hi guys, welcome back to the Island family. This is your girl Maria. Baby Island has just gone for a sleep, so you won't get to see him just yet. If he does wake up throughout this, I'll obviously I'll go grab him. But um, we are doing well. So as you all know, judging by Babe's um, vlog or previous vlog, um, I will say that he's finally here in Australia, guys, and I am so excited and I can't wait to see him i can't wait to see him in ireland i really cannot wait guys this is gonna be like 
the dream of all dreams because this is something we've been fighting for for a very long time as you all know we've been you know in the struggle trying to get this trying to get to one place to be together for good you know now i do want to say that i've noticed that there has been you know a lot of talk in the comments section with the previous vlog in regards to you know him needing a transit visa and and thing to go to london and as you all know he's been saying that he had trouble obviously he had a lot of trouble even the second time around we have gave it a shot they sort of gave him a little bit of strife as well but it all worked out he um is finally here that's the main thing that was the main concern you know i didn't want him to do all this traveling around the world like i've seen a comment actually someone saying something about kingston and panama then panama amsterdam amsterdam to like i think it was china and then china or japan and then to australia that's a heck a lot of you know a lot of um how do you say it traveling for someone that has never traveled before like babe he's never traveled guys this is his first time so it would have been so much easier just to do a straight flight now I'm going to talk about the travel agents that we went with, right? Both of them were great, great people, you know, a big up to Olive Tree Travel, he was amazing. Steven, he, you know, helped us out with everything. It was his first time traveling and I didn't want to make it too hard for him and, and I said to the travel agent, you know, we're just going to do the best we can, you know, just to get him home. That's what we want, we just want him home. So it turns out that um, the first travel agent, he did the best he could, though he couldn't get on that first flight, right? So um, I had another travel agent in mind and this man, as I just mentioned, Olive Tree Travel, um, you can look him up on Facebook. I'm sure that they have a Facebook page. Uh, they absolutely, you know, did the best they could uh, finding him a flight, the most easiest route to Australia. Now, um, we have the documentation that says Babe can landslide or even transit um, via London less than 24 hours. The first flight was a stayover overnight in Heathrow um, because he had to get to Gatwick and from Gatwick to Heathrow. Now, he, we had a hotel booked. We had um, his next PCR test booked in London as well. We had a whole range of... Um, you know, services that he would arrive in London and he'd be attended to even a taxi to pick him up and take him to Heathrow. Okay, so that was done, right? But he didn't get on that flight because for, uh, for some odd reason, they said no, okay? They denied him. They st I still haven't received an answer from British Airways. I'm waiting for an answer. I'm waiting to see what's happening with that. I don't know. So... Um, pending the documentation that we had, we had all the documentation, we had everything, we had, you know, uh, Babe will upload the documentation that states that he was able to landslide and transit less than 24 hours in London, whether it be Gatwick or Heathrow, which may, which, whichever one was first. Anyway, doesn't matter. I noticed that a lot of people saying he needed a transit visa and this vlog isn't by, by any means, uh, you know putting anyone down or making people feel that I don't know a type of way but guys he did not need a visa to travel through to London he stayed in London less than 10 hours he was originally supposed to stay 10 hours but thanks to the travel agent that we dealt with he was tops as soon as he got to London he's like I've got another flight for him which is earlier he doesn't have to stay in London for 10 hours he can actually get onto the next flight to Singapore. That's what happened. It was the most smoothest transition for Babe. I think Babe actually really, you know, he didn't get to see much of London and he didn't get to see much of Singapore, but it doesn't matter because, you know, who's to say in future we might go visit that those places anyway. So um, I just wanna say that like, I'm so happy and I'm so grateful that things turned out the way they did. And I did read in the comments as well that people were saying that it's it's a lesson. It is a lesson. And it also is um, an eye-opener. And it, I, think, I think that in regards to the lady that was talking really bad um, or, or treated babe really bad, I think that 
you know, she must have been having a really bad day, you know. I can't say exactly what happened there because I wasn't there, but I can honestly say that she was wrong for treating Babe the way she did. I think she shouldn't have treated him the way she did because like a lot of you said, don't bring your problems to work. You know, work is work, leave your problems at home. You know, if you're not happy with your job, you know, look for somewhere else. Anyhow, now looking forward to the future and what the future holds. Babe gets out in the next couple of days, guys. So I'm so excited because I'm actually taking a nine hour trip down to Sydney to pick him up. And the reason for that being is because uh, we're in lockdown right now. So we have limited transportation. Flights are being canceled, buses and trains. There's not very much there. So I'm taking the trip down with Arlen and it's about a nine hour trip guys. So it's gonna be amazing, but I'm gonna take you all along with us and we're all going to enjoy this journey together. I just wanted to say a big thank you to all of you for subscribing, our new subscribers, our old subscribers, everybody that has been following us on this journey. The journey is not over yet. We've still got so much to accomplish and so much that we wanna share with you guys. Um, we are so happy that Babe has made his final destination to Australia, his very first time leaving Jamaica. So I know that he's probably not liking the food in hotel quarantine right now and he's probably like going, oh my gosh, I want dumplings, I want kalaloo, I want ackee, I want saltfish. I bet you he's like, I want fish, I just want my food. And I know and I understand because I honestly miss Jamaican food like crazy. So I'm so happy that now I'll be able to get some Jamaican food as well. <laughs> Because where I live, there's not much Jamaican cuisine or anything like that. So, yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to the future, guys. And I'm so happy that you are all with this with us on this journey. And I can't wait to share our adventures, our family, you know, get togethers and whatnot. So stay tuned for the reunion, guys. And big up yourselves. Thank you so much. Mwah. Love, love. Bless up. <laughs>